All right, welcome to numerical integration. Uh, and when we talk about numerical integration, we're actually going to be talking about the trapezoid rule. And we've really talked about something very similar uh, when we took the area under curve when we used rectangles um, and left and right, uh, re from the left and from the right. And so we're actually going to apply a lot of that with trapezoids. So instead of making rectangles with areas under curve, we're actually going to be making trapezoids. So we're going to use this, uh, we use numerical integration when we cannot find the formula or, uh, for the antiderivative uh, and then we can't apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. So it's like when we have an integral and we can't integrate it, uh, we can actually use numerical integration to help us out and, and, and estimate that area. Uh, an example where we can't find the antiderivative or can't find it very easily is the Gaussian function. Uh, you know, from a to b on any interval, e to the uh, negative x squared over 2 dx. So that's, that's just an example of a function that's really hard to anti-differentiate. So it's important to remember that every definite integral can be approximated numerically uh, to any degree of accuracy. So we're able to do this um, with uh, definite integrals. And remember, when we do numerical integration and we, we look and see how accurate we can be, you know, actually taking the integral and, and looking at a certain interval will be the best way to see how close we are. Uh, they do talk about error approximation with the trapezoid rule, uh, but that's a, a BC calculus topic, so that's not going to be covered in this lecture. So let's look at some examples of uh, numerical integration. Okay, so when we talk about the trapezoid rule, okay, um, and we say t sub n consists of approximating the integral of f of x dx by the average of the left and the right endpoint approximations. Okay, so basically it's saying t sub n is equal to one half uh, the right endpoint plus the left endpoint. Now, uh, t sub n approximate the area under the graph by using trapezoids. So we're not using rectangles anymore, we're going to be using trapezoids. Okay, so um, most of these figures you could draw, and when we do these examples, I don't draw the figures. Um, we just look and compute the area uh, based on the given information. So let's look at trapezoids. How do they look on a specific function? Well, a couple of things here. Uh, the trapezoid width, delta x, remember, is going to be equal to b minus a over n. Okay, uh, the partition points are A equals the x naught or the first point, x1, x2, x3, x4, x2, n minus 1, and the final point will be x sub n equals B. So we have our starting and our ending value, okay, over a specific interval. Remember the change in x is the trapezoid width, so that's here. The trapezoid width going across, and they all better be the same. So the formula for finding that delta x, that trapezoid width, is going to be b minus a over n. b and a are your endpoints, or, or your interval given, and n is the number of partitions given. So we might say 5 subintervals, 10 subintervals, 15 subintervals. The larger the number n, the smaller our width is going to be, and the more accurate our area under the curve is going to be. So the formula for the trapezoid rule is going to be b minus a divided by 2n. And then notice how we take all these partition points and we plug it in. First one is f of zero, x sub 0 plus 2 times x sub 1 plus 2 times x sub 2 plus 2 times x sub n minus 1. And finally, f of x sub n. Notice our starting and end point are not being multiplied by 2 just like every other point is going to be. So that's really important to look at. All right, so there's our formula. That's, this is a trapezoid rule that we're going to apply to find the area under a curve using trapezoids. And they kind of, you say, they kind of look like rectangles, but look here at the endpoints here when we connect these points of x1 through x sub n minus 1. They're no longer rectangles. They are trapezoids. These lines here are not parallel to the axes, so we've got little trapezoids all the way through. All right, so in problem number one, we're going to use the trapezoid rule with 10 subintervals 
to approximate the area under the curve of f of x equals 1 over x on the interval 1 to 2. So we've got our a and b, and we also have our n. Our n is equal to 10. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to find our subintervals, or not our subintervals, our width of our rectangle. So the width of the rectangle, uh, or rectangle, excuse me, the width of the trapezoids are delta x equals b minus a over 10. So b, or b minus a over n. So we have 2 minus 1 over 10, which is equal to 1 10. Okay, so now we know uh, that each rectangle, uh, uh, trapezoid is going to be one tenth width. So we can look at the partition points. So the trapezoid width uh, is one tenth. So the partition points are 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, all the way to 1.9, all the way to 2. So there's our partition points. Notice with the dots, I did not write them all. Okay, and I did not write them all here when we did the area, but normally you would have to write all those partitions out. So to set it up, we have b minus a over 2n. Well, n is 1 tenth, okay? So 2 times that, we're going to look at um, 2 times n, which is 2 times 1 tenth, okay? We get 1 20th here in the denominator. Okay, so we're going to take that, and there's f of 1 plus 2 times f of 1.1. So look at our function. 1 divided by 1.1 goes here, plus 2 times our second point is 1.2. So that's 1 divided by 1.2 plus 2. Okay, our third partition point is 1.3. So that's 1 divided by 1.3. Okay, and we keep going all the way to 1.9, and we have 2 times 1 divided by 1.9, and the last one is 1 half, because when you plug 2 in for x, you get 1 over 2, which is 1 half. When you combine all of this, add them together, all these function values, times it by 1 20th, you get approximately 0.69377. So that's the approximate area under a curve. Again, you could check for the error, but we don't do that in AB calculus, just in BC. So let's look at one more example using the sine function. And this one has a smaller amount of intervals, so I actually was able to write the whole thing out. So number two, problem two, we're going to use the trapezoid method with five sub-intervals sub to approximate the area under the curve of y equals the sine of x from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, so I have my a and b, I have my n, and so let's look at delta x. Now, we find delta x here in order to help us find the number being multiplied out when we use the trapezoid rule, because it's b minus a over 2n. We do need to figure out um, that width and plus we can figure it out to help us graph. So we're going to find the width using delta x is equal to b minus a over n, which is pi over 2 minus 0 over 5, which is pi over 10. Secondly, and most importantly really, is to find those partition points. What are they? You're starting at 0 and you're ending at pi over 2. But what are all the points in between? Well, we're going to start with a tenth and you keep adding a tenth. So it's 1 tenth pi. 2 tenths pi, 3 tenths pi, 4 tenths pi, 5 tenths pi, but we can simplify. Pi over 10, pi over 5, 3 pi over 10, 2 pi over 5, and pi over 2. And if you think about it, 2 pi over 10, if you simplify that, we would get uh, 1 fifth pi. So there's the simplification. This is 2 pi over 10, and we simplify it. So these are all the simplified forms of those fractions, so just be careful of that. Once you have your partition, you really, all you have to do then is, is, is plug in and simplify. So let's look. B minus A over 2N, so you have pi over 2 divided by 10 times, now each of our partition points must be substituted into our function. So notice in red I have 0, pi over 10, pi over 5, 3 pi over 10, 2 pi over 5, and pi over 2. Each one of those values gets substituted into our function. So notice the first and the last term are not being multiplied by 2, but every other term is being multiplied by 2. So we have sine of 0 plus 2 times the sine of pi over 10 plus 2 
times the sine of pi over 5 plus 2 times the sine of 3 pi over 10 all the way till we get to sine of pi over 2. It may be helpful to have a graphing calculator in radians to help you simplify or needing the unit circle as well. But when you combine all of these answers up and multiply that by pi over 2 divided by 10, you get approximately 0.9918. Okay, so that's our second example of using the trapezoidal rule. And that's pretty much going to be it. There's other rules that we can look at, such as the Simpsons rule, but that again is not an A B topic. So um, I hope you guys, you know, learn what you need to do out of the trapezoid rule, very similar to area under the curve using rectangles. Uh, if you have any questions, you can just go ahead and put the information below, type your question in, or just go ahead and email me. Thanks, guys.